In today's video, we will reveal how Andrew Evans performed an impossible illusion with his assistant. This balancing illusion is definitely one of a kind and the method to performing it is far more deceptive than the classics. I will demonstrate for you my abilities in the art of self-levitation. Let's do a quick rewind of what happened in the performance. Andrew started off the performance by saying that he will perform a simple demonstration of physics. He said that this idea came to him when he was in his workshop and was trying to reach a tool that was on a higher shelf. He said that the ladder was a little precarious and he realized there was a much safer way to get that tool. He placed the stools in front of each other and placed a wooden plank on top of them. Right then his assistant walked up on stage. And he said why not just ask a friend for help. Andrew lifted up her assistant Naomi to reach for the tool on the top shelf. Andrew said that he is going to start off the performance by building a bridge and he needed to make sure the plank was equal distance from both sides. He noticed that the overhang was greater than 3 inches so he pulled the plank from the other side to make it equally distant on both sides. He then drilled a hole into the wood plank into locations and placed two metallic poles into each of the slots he created. He placed a block on the wooden plank upon which Naomi stood and leaned against the rod to her right. Naomi said that let's start with a precarious balance that looks difficult but isn't actually that hard. While saying that, Andrew removed the block and she was successfully balanced between the two rods. He then removed one of the poles and Naomi was still balanced amazingly, while holding the pole on her right. He then lifted her up by her legs at a slight angle and upon leaving her there she still managed to maintain her impossible balance. To make it even more impossible. He lifted her at an angle parallel to the ground and upon letting go she was defying the laws of physics with this amazing balance, he then took the measuring tape and moved it around her body to show that nothing was actually holding her up. He said that this next bit will probably blow pen and teller away, and removed the stool right underneath the pole and took the impossible balancing act to the national level. Once again waved the measuring tape underneath the pole to show that there really was nothing supporting the wooden plank underneath. He placed a stool under the wooden plank and the block on top and carefully lowered her body down to the block, so she could safely get off the pole. Now before I get down to the reveal, I want to give a quick shout out to my wonderful patrons for supporting my work. Their support is a reason I am able to improve my content and upload more regularly. This levitation act is basically a newer and far better take on the classic broom levitation act, so I will be addressing how the classic broom act works and will definitely help us in figuring out how he performed this latest version which is far more deceptive and organic. We will start by analyzing the act, then discussing Penn's code words and finally, putting together all the observations from our analysis and logically explaining how each component and action played a part in this incredible illusion. When Andrew initially started off the performance, he picked up the wooden plank off the stool and placed it right in front before lifting up that particular stool and moving it aside. This act is pretty fishy, it's as if he is trying to cover something, but upon close examination of the stool, we don't really see anything that is there to be covered about the stool. We then notice that while he is adjusting the wooden plank on the second stool, there seems to be a shadow of the plank on top of it, as if the wooden plank is not really in contact with the stool. If we were to look at it from the front angle, we can compare the difference between both of these areas where the wooden plank contacts the stool and see the obvious difference. We then notice that the wooden plank already has some sort of circular markings as some sort of guidelines to where exactly Andrew was intending to drill into the wooden plank. Although this point may seem unnecessary to point out, but if we were to look closely at the edges of this wooden plank, something seems a bit off about it. Furthermore, the amount of sawdust produced while drilling into the wooden plank does not look enough especially for a wooden plank that is supposed to be extremely dense to perform such a balancing act in which two adults are standing on the board. There is something odd about the wooden plank's density by just observing this scene alone. How can the drill penetrate in such a dense wood so easily without producing a large amount of sawdust? It's as if Andrew created such an illusion on purpose. We can confirm that the drill hole is actually pretty deep by looking at how deep the pole enters into it. Right before he sticks the pole into the wooden board, we once again catch a close-up glimpse of our previous observation and can confirm that the board is genuinely floating above this second stool over here. Naomi can also be seen placing her right hand over her right thigh, and upon removing her hand right here at this moment, we see that there is a rectangular bump where she placed her right hand in order to hide it. Not only do we see this rectangular bump, but also see something popping out behind her right elbow. 
and she also seems to be adjusting something behind her right arm with her left hand when she has crossed her arms in this frame. While disconnecting her arm after the balance act, we notice she struggles to get off the pole and it simply implies there's something hidden inside her clothes, helping her perform this balance. We even notice a very odd bow at the end of the performance, with her once again placing her right hand over her right thigh hiding that rectangular object we spotted earlier. Since this act did not fool Penn and Teller, we can listen to what Penn had to say about Andrew's performance and through Penn's code words, put together the pieces of this puzzle. Suspension, which, you know, then became this cheesy, bad version, broom suspension. Yeah. Penn definitely appreciated his version of the broom suspension balancing act. Now that Penn mentioned the broom suspension act in his code words, I'll quickly explain how exactly that suspension act works. In a broom suspension act, a broom is balanced on the floor upon which an assistant is carefully balanced upon with the help of other assistants. In order to perform this illusion, the brooms are actually poles similarly to what we saw in Andrew's act and the assistant is wearing a harness attached to her body as you can see in this clip. This harness has a point for disconnecting and connecting the assistant's body and is hidden behind her right arm. We can see a rectangular object holding the assistant's legs near her thigh similar to what we spotted in our observations. This means, the basic harness functioning is based off the original broom suspension trick but instead of a second assistant helping her place this and this into the slot, she has to do it herself in Andrew's variation. And doesn't have the phases in this that have all the provers in there. Penn also mentioned Andrew using a lot of provers to make the balance act more convincing as compared to the broom act. We notice in our observations there were markings to help as guidelines for Andrew to drill holes into the plank. We also liked really nice touches of you just drilling the holes for the poles. Penn pointing out this observation regarding the holes were actually code words implying that Andrew was actually drilling holes into the wooden plank board to prove that it really was a wooden plank when in reality it was a hidden structure in disguise. All the power tools, but someday we'll have to get you in here to actually work on our stage and build something for it. Penn also mentioned some preparation of this act on Penn and Teller stage. This might be confusing for some, but those who are regular viewers of my channel might have already caught on to what Penn really was trying to point out in these code words. What you did here was sleight of board. What Penn said over here was actually pretty clever and something that Andrew did in plain sight with incredible misdirection. To make sense of all these observations and code words I will now explain logically how Andrew performed this act. When Andrew initially started off the performance by placing the wooden plank right in front of the stool and picking it up, this was one of the provers that Penn was talking about. Basically during this moment, Andrew was trying to prove that this tool was not stuck or welded with the floor of the theater. But in order to prove that it wasn't stuck, he had to place the wooden plank as a cover for a reason. This is because where the stool initially was placed on the floor, there were two large screws drilled into the theater. We can spot these two screws right here in this frame, when he picks up the stool due to bad camera angle. From the front, these screws would not have been visible to Penn and Teller nor the audience. After lifting up the stool, and proving that it was not welded with the floor, he placed it back on the screws but he did not place it on top of the screws rather connected the bottom two legs right over here of this stool with the two screws through a mechanism that looks something like this. You can see that in a similar levitation illusion performed by famous magicians, a screw is drilled into the floor upon which the harness is hooked on like so. These two hooks were underneath the two legs of the stool right over here. Now comes the part when Andrew performed sleight of hand that Penn mentioned in his code words. Andrew on purpose placed the bore such that it was slightly off on the right side, so with the excuse of trying to even it out, he actually slid the two hooks similar to the ones inside the legs of the stool onto the top portion of the stool. This is the reason why this end of the stool was firmly contacting the top and the second stool was not in contact with the other end of the apparent wooden plank. The reason I use the term apparent to describe the wooden plank is because this wooden plank is actually a metallic plank that is hollow on the inside, disguised as a wooden plank on the outside. If we were to remove all the wooden casings from all six sides, you would see here is how it would look like. This metallic plank already has two holes inside on the top and the bottom. When Andrew drilled into the apparent wooden plank, he simply drilled into the thin wooden layer on top which is why only a small amount of sawdust was produced, because the remaining part was hollow on the inside. The purpose of using a metallic frame on the inside was to make sure the structure was rigid enough to perform this balance, because a simple wooden plank would have easily broken, due to the uneven forces being applied on opposite ends, with such support involving a metallic hook on one side and at least a 120-pound human on the other. 
After placing the poles into the two slots, we already know how the harness worked to help her levitate as discussed earlier, was similar to the broom act harness, and the rest we have already figured out in the observations. If you have made it this far into the video, be sure to like and also consider subscribing, I would really appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel and at the same time get access to exclusive reveals only for my patrons. Join the $10 tier of my Patreon to gain exclusive access today. For those who want to request magic reveals and chat with me live they can join my $30 tier.